In this section, we'll solve and graph some inequalities. Inequalities are solved in a very similar way that equations are solved, with some important differences, which I'll go over. In this first one, we'll treat the greater than, less than sign as if it was an equals when we do the algebra. And so if I subtract 2 from the left in order to get it away from the x, then I just want to subtract 2 from the right as well. And so in that way, it's very similar to solving equations. We want to bring our inequality sign down. And let's do 5 minus 2, which is 3. And now we have a solution set which we can plot. Now this isn't just one solution, of course. There are an infinite number of solutions described by, the, by this here. It says that x could be anything greater than or equal to 3. Now since it could be equal to 3, I'm actually going to start right there on 3. And I'm going to put a solid dot there because that's part of the solution set. But anything greater than 3 is also part of the solution set. So 4 would work, 5 would work, 6 would work, 10 would work, 15, and so on. Anything to the right of 3 will work. So we actually just want to shade all that in. And we want to put an arrow indicating that the solution set keeps going forever toward infinity. Now we want to be able to describe the solution set in a few different ways. The way that's shown here is called algebraic notation. But there are other notations to be aware of as well. One of them is called interval notation. And for that, we use parentheses and brackets. So here on the left, I'm actually going to use this square bracket to say that 3 is part of the solution set. And we're going to go from 3 all the way toward infinity, but we never actually reach infinity because it's not a real number. So we're going to use parentheses on the other side of that. That is called interval notation. All right, let's try the next one. 3x is less than 18. We want to get x alone. So let's divide both sides by 3. And we'll have x is less than 6. That's our solution set. So let's plot it. This time, 6 is not part of the solution set. So x cannot be 6. It has to be something less than 6. For that reason, I'm going to put an open dot at 6 to say that 6 is not part of the solution set, but everything to the left of it is part of the solution set. Now, it's a common mistake for people to start their drawing, let's say, at 5, for example, because that's something that's less than 6. But you can't start at 5, because even 5.5 .5 is less than 6, and 5.9 is less than 6, 5.999 is less than 6. So we have to shade everything between 5 and 6, we just can't shade 6 itself. All right, so this looks pretty good for a graph of our solution set. And to express it in interval notation, we would say we're going from negative infinity on the left all the way to 6 on the right. And we want to put a parenthesis there because 6 is not included. If it had been included, we use the square bracket uh, like we did above. But here, 6 is not included, so we use parenthesis. If you want, you can draw these symbols right on the diagram itself like that and you can put a square bracket here
All right, so here, 2x over 3 is greater than or equal to 4. We can use the idea of multiplying by the reciprocal to cancel the 2 thirds. So let's multiply the left side by 3 halves, and we'll multiply the right side by 3 halves as well. Since we have a 3 above, that will cancel with the 3 below, and the 2 above cancels with the 2 below, we'll have x alone. Then we just bring down our inequality sign and multiply 4 times 3 halves. That's going to be 12 halves, so we'll have x is greater than or equal to 6. All right, so let's find 6 on the number line here. The solution set includes 6, so we can put a closed dot there this time. And we want to shade every number that's to the right of 6. And just put an arrow, and that's our solution set. It's everything from 6 to infinity in interval notation. Sometimes we may see compound inequalities. In this case, it shows that x is going to be between two numbers. So when that happens, we have to do operations to all sides of the inequality, and there are going to be three sides to do it to. So I want to get the negative 4 away from x, so I want to add 4. But I can't just do it to the middle. I have to do it to the right and to the left as well. So 2 plus 4 makes 6. Bring down my inequality sign. We'll be left with negative 2x in the middle, inequality sign, and then 10. There's one more step to do here, and that's to divide by a negative 2. And this is one place where inequalities are treated differently than equations, than equ equalities. Um, so what's different is whenever we divide or multiply by a negative, we have to make a change to our inequality sign directions. So we started off with 6 is less than negative 2x less than 10. We're going to divide by a negative, and when we do that, we actually have to switch the direction of the signs. Okay, so that's going to give us x is between negative 5 and negative 3. And if you look closely at the numbers, this will make sense because negative 3 is, is greater than negative 5 because it's to the right of negative 5 on a number line. See, negative 3 would be here, and negative 5 is over here. Now, it doesn't matter which number is larger in size when it comes to the term greater. The term greater in math means more positive. It means to the right. So any number that is to the right here on this number line is going to be greater than any number to the left of it. So lesser numbers are to the left, greater numbers are to the right. Now we want to shade in everything between negative 3 and 5. That's going to be our solution set. To put it into interval notation, we're talking about everything between negative 5 and negative 3. Let's solve this inequality. To do it, we want to undo what's happening to the x. But we got to do it to all sides. So I'm actually going to multiply all of the terms by 2. Because I want to get that division by 2, 
out of there. So let's multiply. Two times every side of the inequality. All right, these will cancel. We'll get one. These will cancel. So we'll have x plus four. And over here we'll have eight. At this point we can go on to the last step, which is to get the x totally alone by subtracting four. So we'll get negative three is less than x is less than or equal to four. Notice that we didn't have to switch the signs of the inequality. It's because we never divided or multiplied by a negative number. This will be our final answer. We could put it into interval notation by saying that our solution set is between negative three and four. Negative three is not included but four is, so we use the square bracket with four. Try it for yourself on B. See if you can solve for N and then graph the solution set. And then I'll do the same problem in a moment as well. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply all terms by 6. Okay, because we want to get rid of the 6 down below. All right, that's going to give us negative 3 is less than n plus 6 is less than 1. If we add 6 to all sides, it looks like we'll end up with 3 is less than n is less than 7. So we'll have an open dot at 3, open dot at 7, and we want to shade everything in between. That's our solution set as a graph. To put it into interval notation, we put our left endpoint on the left, put our right endpoint on the right, and we'll be using parentheses for both sides because this is a fully open interval. It doesn't include 3 or 7. The next type of problem we might encounter here will be a compound inequality that's written with an or or an and. The compound inequalities that we looked at above are actually and type of inequalities. See, the x had to be both less than or equal to 4 and greater than negative 3 in this first one. Uh, so. So here we have to interpret what is the meaning of or in this context. Let's solve each of the inequalities individually first so that we get a better sense of what the two different solution sets to each of them individually would be. And then we'll try to figure out what the or means here. So we'll have 6x minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 42. Add 6 to both sides and you get 6x is less than or equal to negative 36. So here we have x is less than equal to negative 6. Now I didn't switch the signs of this because I never introduced multiplication or division by a negative. It doesn't matter that there are negatives present in the problem. What matters is when the problem solver arbitrarily introduces a division or a multiplication of a negative on both sides. 
That didn't happen here, so I didn't have to switch the signs. Now let's solve the other one. I'll subtract 2 from both sides and get negative 2x is less than negative 6. And now I need to divide by a negative 2 in order to get the x alone. But see, I introduced that. I divided both sides by negative 2. And since I did that, I need to switch the direction of the sign. All right, so we're going to get x is greater than 3 for that one. So this and this together will help us find the final solution set. But this is an OR statement, which means that any x's that meet just one of these conditions will qualify as part of the solution set. So you have the option of graphing each of these individually first and then combining them. So x is less than or equal to negative 6 would look like this. It would just be a solid dot and then we would point to the left. x is greater than 3 would look like this and we would point to the right. Now keep in mind that any x's that meet one or the other criteria will qualify as part of the solution set. So in this problem, this actually is the final solution set. To write it in interval notation, we have to do uh, one thing that's a little new, and that is we have to use a union. Because our solution set is spread out on the number line, we want to describe all the x's that are in the left part of it, and that would be negative infinity comma negative 6 with a bracket. Okay, that part describes these solutions over here. But this part is described by 3 comma infinity. So see, we have two different intervals. And in order to join them together as part of one final solution set, we want to put a U between those intervals. And that means union, which means the solution set is made up of both of those regions. Try to solve D for yourself. Graph the individual solution sets for each of the inequalities. And then we'll try to reason out what the final solution set really is. So to solve the problem on the left, we may want to get the x's together. So we could have negative 2x is less than or equal to 4. And then we want to get rid of that negative 2, so we'll divide. But when we divide, we switch the direction of the inequality because we're dividing by a negative. So the final result that you should get there would be x is greater than or equal to negative 2. For this one here, we'll add 4 to both sides. We'll get negative 4x is greater than negative 8. And once again, we're going to be dividing by a negative in order to solve it. So when we do that, we switch the direction of the sign. And it looks like we'll have x is less than 2 for that part of it. Now if you go ahead and graph each of these individually, let's see what we'd get. We'd have a solid dot and a arrow to the right for this one. For x is less than 2, we would have a open dot at 2 and an arrow that just goes to the left. And they overlap. But this is not an or. This is an and. Which means that any 
solutions to the compound inequality have to meet both the criteria. They have to be solutions of the first inequality and they have to be solutions of the second inequality as well. And so we want to find the region where these overlap. And there is a region where they overlap. It would be in the middle here. So this is part of the final solution set. Zero would work, for example. And you can plug in a zero here to show that it would check for the inequality on the left. And plug in a zero for the inequality on the right, and it'll check there too. And that's what we need for an and. It has to meet both criteria. So now we can shade in the negative two because that is included in both of the drawings here. But when it comes to two here, although two is on the number line here, it is not part of the solution set above. And so we cannot keep it, actually. And our final solution, then, will be from negative 2 to 2, but we won't include 2. And this would be a good final answer for that one.